Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified, episode number 23. Wow, every episode I say I'm not going to get excited about what episode we're on, but boy, I tell you, the time is really flying by here. So what are we talk about? Well, I think the elephant in the room is this bear market that we're in. So let's continue to focus on that or get back to focusing on that. And I want to talk about un understanding trend following in bear markets, talk a little bit about value, get into some questions on that. And some bottoming signals and signs to keep an eye out, keep an eye out for. And by the way, I do take requests. If there's something you want me to cover, let me know. It makes my job a little bit easier because I don't have to figure out what I'm going to talk about. If you need to reach me, www.davelandry.com slash contact, or you can go to davelandry.com slash stock charts if you're interested in the slides from these and all the other prior presentations and also i have a free mini market timing course which covers a lot of the concepts or all of the concepts we're going to talk about today now before we get started i wanted to show you some things that are relative to this market but these are also apply to future markets and other markets outside of stocks just in case I get hit with a beer truck, or more likely my wife kills me while we're in quarantine. I'm, I'm kind of built for this quarantine, because I'm here usually 12 hours a day in front of my screens. But not everybody else in the household is, is used to that. So, wish me luck. And I wish you luck too, obviously. Obviously, this is a very fluid situation. I'm recording one day earlier. In other words, today is the 24th. From when this will likely be published on the 25th so what I would suggest you do is check my bear market updates I've been working hard to get an update out every morning before the open you can use that URL or just quite simply go to my website and on the top menu I added the bear market 2020 update menu item now if this is your first bear market learn I noticed somebody a little bit of a newbie to trading and they're out there trying to short and trade inverse shares and do all these crazy things. And it's not a good environment to learn that in, but just pay attention to what's going on. And possibly paper trade. Now, if you are new to trading and just got decimated by holding on, or I should say if you're an investor holding on too, versus having a damage control plan in place and maybe a little bit of market timing, then once again, you want to learn for the next time. I never want to come across as pouring salt in somebody's wounds. Believe me, I feel absolutely rotten about some of my friends and family who did not get out of the way when this thing hits, when this thing hit. And I'm going to talk a lot about that in a few minutes. Now, I'm not a fan of buy and hold at all. 50% or more drawdowns are not uncommon. In fact, this is my third bear market. Now, we haven't hit 50%, and I don't want to say the word yet, but we're down about 30%, and that's pretty darn hard. But just keep in mind, as I've been preaching as of late, and I don't know who said this first, but I've said it quite a lot lately, all asset classes will lose half of their value at some point in your lifetime. And I've seen quite a few markets lose half of their value. Cocoa, gold, silver, stocks more than once. Just name a market. And pretty much, in fact, all of them have likely lost half of their value at some or will lose half of their value at some point in your lifetime. Now, the most dangerous thing is buy low and sell high. Before this mess got kind of out of hand and I was in quarantine, the man on the street wants to know, hey, is it a, is it a bargain now? And I'm like, no, buy and hold has really, especially buy low and sell high, has ruined many of uh, lives. So along those lines of people ask me, is the market a value? Now I'm getting a lot of digital requests for this through my, some things like Facebook group and, but not so much in Facebook group because most everybody there kind of gets the idea of trend following, but in emails and friends and family and such. I often say it's often darkest right before it gets more dark, and that's an ancient trend-following moron proverb. 
The example I like to show here, NASDAQ Composite lost half of its value in 2000. And you might have thought, man, that's cheap. It's 50% off. I actually saw someone once said that when a market loses half its value, run out and sell puts. Well, that'll work until it don't. And as you can see, the NASDAQ went on to lose another 50% of its value before it finally began to bottom out. So just because it's cheap doesn't mean that it can't get a lot cheaper. As I've been preaching lately, if you've been following along, oversold could always become more oversold. Or quite frankly, again, it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. So the next question is, what about fundamentals? Well, the fundamental factor suggests what ought to happen in the market, while the technical factor suggests what actually is happening in the market. And that's R.W. Schaubacher from Stock Market Profits. Someone not, not quite as old as Mr. Schaubacher, but probably knew him, probably knew him in grade school, I guess. Greg, if you're watching, I'm just, I'm half kidding. Remember, all of the financial theories and all of the fundamentals will never be any better than what the trend of the market will allow. And that's my brother from another mother, Greg Morris, who said that. Now, here's a great example of this, and it's a painful example because it, it hits home. One of my family members contacted me recently in a bit of a panic and I thought it was one less thing to worry about because I was thinking, okay, this market's getting creamed. She's probably doing okay because a year ago she told her financial guy that she wanted to be conservative. She wants to retire in a few years. She has some health concerns and she doesn't want to be aggressive anymore. So I assume they moved her mostly into cash. And to my surprise, they put a lot of her funds into fundamental funds. Now, I blacked out the names of these funds, but I'm pretty sure you can go out and find any fundamental fund right now, and they probably all look like this, which sickens me, and I was looking at this right before I went live and doing some of the measurements, and after I did one or two measurements, I couldn't do any more because it was literally making me sick. I felt so bad for this person. But here's one of the funds, as you can see, the market recently imploded, right? What did this ETF do? It imploded. Here's another fundamental fund. What did it do? Imploded. Yet another one. This is the third one. Imploded. The fourth one has imploded. And then the fifth one that they put in her portfolio also imploded. And they were probably thinking, hey, you know, these fundamentals make a lot of sense. And, you know, she's not going to get rich, but look at it just kind of bumping along, bumping along, bumping, bumping along, bumping along. Well, that'll work until it don't. As long as the overall market is going up, so will the fund. Unfortunately, price holds fundamentals hostage. So be very careful if you are to use a fundamental type of analysis. I believe price is king and price does not lie. In fact, about two weeks ago, I was taking this corona thing really, really seriously and my friends and some of my family thought I was a bit crazy. And I'm like, you don't understand. I'm up close and personal with this market that's imploding and I haven't seen anything like this in my 30 years or 25 years or so, however long I've been doing this of trading 25 years full-time so it's ugly out there now one thing I want to caution you from doing is theme investing okay well let's invest in this stay-at-home company or a company that would help out with the stay-at-home things or let's invest in maybe a company that makes wet wipes or whatever you got to be really really careful with that because these themes unfortunately rarely play out. Markets trade on emotions, not logic. Somebody wanted to buy Verizon a couple days ago, and it's kind of falling out of bed. Although it's not falling out of bed as bad as everything else, but I wouldn't rush out and buy Verizon because you think there's some sort of theme that's going to play in with this coronavirus. Now, 
if you have a setup, then by all means take it. And I don't want to keep pounding the beat the dead horse on the fish that got away. But recently I was in a stock right before, and it took off nicely and I got some profits out that I got stopped out. So I was flat. And then, of course, it takes off 50 points because they had a potential coronavirus vaccine in the works. Now, I didn't know going in, I wasn't playing the theme, okay? I was just playing the setup. So I would encourage you to get a methodology, make sure you have cemented that methodology or understand that methodology fully and follow that methodology. And again, buy and hold, I think, has ruined many of lives. And I think the best way to trade is to trend follow. And by the way, the only way to ever make money trading is to capture a trend. So why not be a trend follower all the time? So trend following means you're buying a little bit high and selling higher. I think that's the best way to trade. Buy low and sell high, again, has ruined many, many, many of lives. And just remember, what's low, how do you know what's low is low? For instance, again, the NASDAQ was low. It was down 50% before it halved again. Now, one thing that I was talking about recently is that signals are fractal. What occurs in one time frame occurs in another. So I would recommend that you use the hourly charts to give you a bit of a heads up. But be careful because you can get into a little bit of whipsaw there. I have one client in my Facebook group. And he does his market timing off of signals such as hourly bow ties, which you'll see in just one second. And he does a fantastic job of getting out of the way. As I've been saying lately, his wife was like, why are we 80% cash? And then three weeks later, you know, she's no longer asking that question. But the only problem is you got to be really careful with a shorter term signal because you can end up chasing your own tail. You will get more and more whipsaw. So here's the... 60-minute S&P 500. You can see that the moving averages, this is a 10 simple, 20 exponential, and 30 exponential, came together fairly quickly on the hourly chart, and then they begin to spread out. The setup, and go in and watch, I forget what episode it is, but if you request the slides, you'll see which episode it is. But go in and watch that episode of Trading Simplified, and you'll know as much as I know about bow ties. But you can see the market, uh, the pattern requires a bit of a pullback, meaning uh, ideally a higher high and a higher low. And you look to enter below the pullback. So that sell signal triggered around 1 p.m. on February 21st on an hourly chart. Now, it took a little while longer, obviously, for the moving averages to catch up on the daily chart, but that signal triggered back you know, on I think it was March 5th with the daily bow time. Now here's what's fascinating to me is that a longer term system, as you'll see in just one second, actually triggered before the daily signal. A weekly, I get a weekly sell signal before daily and I'm a member of the American Association of Professional Tech Technical Analysts and I'm part of the forum there. And I'm noticing a lot of headlines that some of these indicators seem to be broke because this is the move we've seen is unprecedented. And that's what scared me the most about this move is we saw a weekly sell signal before we saw a daily sell signal, which is quite unusual. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Landry Light. When I come up with something, a lot of times I'll, have, I'll watch somebody do some presentations or whatever, and I'll just look at the moving average in the chart. Usually I always have a moving average when somebody's presenting. And they'll show you their system with a whole bunch of buys and sells. And I'll just look at the moving average and think, you know, if you bought just when the price crossed above that moving average, especially if you have a little daylight or Landry light is what I now call it, below the price bar and sell when you have the Landry light or daylight below the price bar, below the moving average that is, you would do quite well on staying on the right side of the market. So here... I have illustrated, you can see the low, the price, greater than the moving average, that's upside Landry Light. When the high of the moving average is less than, I'm sorry, when the high of price is less than the moving average, that's downside daylight. And you can see it in the chart here. We had one little kiss of the moving average, but for the most part, that run from 2013 
to almost 2016, you had upside daylight. And that's illustrated in this indicator down below. Now, these are going to be made public eventually. They're working on it. I don't know. I don't have a release date. I'm not trying to tease you with this, but I just want to show you because it makes for a great teaching example. I don't plot this indicator that often. I just tend to eyeball the daylight or Landry light on the chart. But you can see when the market gets in trouble, you begin to have downside Landry light. Now, this histogram counts the number of days of Landry light. Now, I'm not a big fan of trying to call a top of a market, but I have noticed from empirical observations that when you get around 100 days of weekly Landry light, you tend to have a correction. And, you know, hopefully we'll get these out sooner rather than later so you guys can play around with them too and maybe discover a few things on your own. But anyway, getting back to the charts, you can see that nice little run we have from 216, 2016 on to 2018 looked pretty good. And you had upside Landry light that whole time. Now you had a little bit of a downturn in 2019. Now I would consider that a lot more than a whipsaw. And I'm going to show you that we had a sell signal in the TFM 10% system right around then. And that market, especially if you live through it, that was a pretty ugly market. Now, as I often preach, the market is a really bad teacher. Here's a story I've told at nauseam. I'll tell it one more time. When we were, we moved twice recently, once to a rental and then once to this house that we built. So we had to live in a rental in between, but somewhere in all that mess, I ended up renting a, a U-Haul, I think in January of 2019. At that point, the market was really blowing and going. And the guy in the U-Haul place, he had CNBC on, and I didn't tell him that I was a professional and had a website and everything. I just said, hey, I dabble in the markets too. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm so glad I held on through that December sell-off. I just wish I would have bought more. And I'm thinking, that'll work until it don't. But I kept my mouth shut. And unfortunately, and I hope this guy's okay, but unfortunately, I'm sure it's another one of those it worked until it don't situations. But anyway, we had nice little daylight coming into this sell off to the upside. We had a great run higher, as you guys know. And then unfortunately, that reset and now we have downside Landry light. I use the terms Landry light and daylight interchangeably because somebody named it many years ago, daylight. It was actually, I'm gonna show my age here. In 1995, I wrote an article for Stocks and Commodities where I use this Landry light concept and somebody called it daylight and my wife's like, why can't you put your name on something like John Bollinger? It's like, all right, I'll put my name on this. <laughs> it's somebody, one of my clients came up with the name Landry light, which was really nice of uh, them. So you could see nice bull trends, upside day light or Landry light, uh, sell offs, downside Landry light, nice bull trends, upside Landry light, sell-offs, downside Landry light, and then upside, upside Landry light, and then of course, this mess that we're in now, we're beginning to see some downside Landry light. So my point is, stay in the light, the light is good. <laughs> All kidding aside, not that this is the most perfect thing in the world, but it will help to keep you on the right side of the market, as you can plainly see. Now, I have the TFM 10% system, and the bottom indicator says Landry pullback, but we're going to change the name of that to, it's supposed to be percent away from highs, and it's a measurement of closing highs. And in my research, I found that if the market goes about 10% away on a closing basis from its 50-week high, it could be in trouble. My thinking there is if a market's going to go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, then you might want to think about getting out at B. And on the long side, you might want to consider going long at B. And I actually have an IPO pattern that pretty much does just that. But as you can see, with this 10 TFM 10% sell system, I'm, I'm sorry, system, we had a sell way back in December of 19, and that spill was a little bit uglier than it looks on this chart. If memory serves, I think the, the Russell lost about 20% of its value, 
And the media claims a bear market at 20%, which, of course, they're claiming this is a bear market. And so far, it is. And then we had a buy signal, as you can see, back in 2019. And then, I'm sorry, that sell signal was in 2018. 2019, we had a buy signal. And then we just received another sell signal. And this is the weekly sell signal I was concerned about, the fact that it triggered before the daily even caught up to price. And that's how fast it sold off. Around 3,000 is where it triggered. Let me just give you the rules real quick. If you download my slides from those other presentations, you'll get the exact rules so you can go through it on your own. But for the upside, I need two weeks of upside Landry Light. And the market also has to be within 10% of its 50-week closing high. So down here, if you look, it would have to be below this 10% line, meaning that it is nearing its old highs okay it's old 50 week highs and you need two weeks of upside landry light that landry light is a whipsaw filter to help the system from having too many signals in here i wanted something that would trade as infrequent as possible and as you'll see in the spreadsheet it only made about 11 trades in 30 years which i think is pretty amazing now the sell signals are a little bit more quick to happen because by the time you wait around for the downside landry light it might be too late so for the sell signals what i like to do is sell if you have a close below the 50 week moving average and you're more than 10 percent away from the 50 week high and that's the entire system i'm amazed sometimes at how well these little simple things can work and then i'm inspired by the Trading Simplified, name of this show, to see how simple I can make trading. And that's kind of like an ongoing goal for me. As I've said quite a bit, with this system, I didn't initially design it to beat the pants off a of buying hold, buy and hold. What I was trying to do was avoid the severe drawdowns that occur with buy and hold. I'm like, well, what would get me out of the market if the market's in trouble? Well, if it closes below the 50 week moving average and it's more than 10% away from its highs, closing highs, then maybe I need to get out of the way. So these diaper change moments I have here are the lowest that the market went based on the S&P 500 after you exited the position. So you can see you lost 4%, which is not too bad. Would you consider it if you'd hung on, you would have lost another 44% of your account value. The run up to 2008, you would have made 48% on your accounts. Now, keep in mind, you were up over 58% because you had to initially at least give up 10%. And that's what trend following is all about. Being willing to give up some of those open profits with the hopes, and hope's a very dangerous word in this business, I realize that, but with the hope that you're able to ride out that correction before the market takes off again. But in this case, pretty extreme. The market dropped another 50% after you got stopped out of that position. Now, here, there you are up 48%. If you'd have held on, you would have ended up losing a lot of money, half of your account, in fact. Now, the last signal we received was on 227. And again, that's a weekly signal that occurred before the daily signals. That just kind of blows me away. But the market to the low of 21.91, I hate to say low so far, but we'll see. We're getting a little bounce today. Let's see what happens. But to that low was 28%. Now we mark to market this based on yesterday's close. That date should read 323. I'm not sure why the slide didn't update. But you can see based on that mark to market, this system, which really didn't do fantastic as far as beating the pants off buy and hold, although it did avoid these huge drawdowns, but it didn't do that fantastic when I first released it. Usually, if you've ever written a system, the day you release it, the day it stops working. But anyway, so I released this a couple years ago, gave it away for free. And now you can see it's beginning to look a hell of a lot better with over 1,000% gain versus 705% gain for buy and hope. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting here is it did stay out of the market or it stays out of the market about 20% of the time so 6.38 years out of those 30 something years 31 years or so it was out of the market but it only made 11 trades in those years so i would encourage you have something objective like this don't follow it mechanically 
but have something objective that you could use to help keep you on the right side of the market. Now, getting back to the bow ties, we had a weekly bow tie sell in 2001. We had a buy in, actually that was in 2000. We had a buy in 2003. We had a sell in early 2008. Everybody was all shocked when the market sold off in 2008. Not to brag or talk in hindsight or anything, but it's like we had a plethora of sell signals. And as I've been saying quite a bit, I actually apologized to my clients because the database was producing all shorts and I didn't have any longs to give them. So we started shorting the market even though the market was making these marginal new highs. Now keep in mind, like all indicators, you will have some lag. So at the 2009 bottom, this was a little bit late getting in, but we had plenty of signals on a lower time frame, and we had things such as first thrust triggering off, especially on the daily charts. And we had a plethora of buys, especially in the energies if memory serves. So the $64,000 question is, what's it going to take for this market to bottom? Well, it's going to have to stop going down first. And I know it's a Captain Obvious statement, but as you can see, we made new lows in here for quite a long time. And every time the market makes a new low, it is not yet at a bottom. And what, what concerns me is the gurus come out of the woodwork and I guess predict early and often, I suppose, to call a bottom. And many gurus have called a bottom many, many weeks ago, and so far, that hasn't happened. The other thing I would watch for is closing lows, okay? We had a new closing low a few days ago, and that's concerning because it, it's psychologically, it does affect everyone. And then, of course, we made a brand new low before this little bounce coming into today. So I would watch for signals. I would start with the hourly chart. And the good news here is the moving averages have begun to turn up. And again, this is a 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential. One thing I learned from Greg Morris is as soon as an exponential moving average, as soon as the price crosses it, it will turn up. So those averages will begin to catch up to price fairly quickly. But wait for them to turn and then possibly then wait for a little bit of a pullback if you're looking to get in on aggressive trade. What I would do is I wouldn't be so excited to trade that bottom. I'd let the market retrace and then decide whether or not we should short. Now, a couple of thoughts here, closing thoughts. For the trader types, beware the flickering ticks. I'm guilty as charged. I got that term from David Keller. I'm not sure where he got it. I have to check with him on that. But I'm kind of getting sucked into my screens like a moth and making a few unnecessary trades. So I'm guilty of doing that. Even if you are an investor, consider yourself an investor, just have a plan for all asset classes or anything that you might invest in. I would also encourage you to study simple trend following techniques like I showed today and like we discuss often in these, perf these programs and realize that nothing's perfect with trend following, you're going to be a little late to the party because in order to follow a trend, as Greg Morris says, you must first have a trend to follow. And you will also overstay your welcome. As I often say, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. We lost money as this market began to roll over, got stopped out of all our great looking longs, and then what happened? We began to short stocks, and now we are short. So if you're looking for me, DaveLander.com slash contact, you can also reach me and get all the slides and everything in the market timing course, again, at DaveLander.com slash stock charts. I want to thank everybody for watching. Hang in there, be safe, be sane, and may the trend be with you.